Okay, time to apply what we learned so far about probability generating functions. So, um, using example of Bernoulli distribution, I give you here the probability mass function of the Bernoulli distribution. Um, here, i is our random variable. So, a variable which is Bernoulli distributed will take 0 or 1, and it will take 1 with probability p, and it will take 0 value with probability 1 minus p. Probability mass functions are there to give us probabilities. So, for instance, if I wanted to know probability that my um, Bernoulli random variable takes 1, well, all I have to do is just to replace i here and here with 1, and it's, let's see what happens. So, I'll put uh, p1 equals, sorry, times 1 minus p uh, to the power of 1 minus 1. So this is going to be 0, so therefore this is going to be 1, so we'll just end up with uh, p. Hey, so that's great news, so probability that my random variable takes 1 is just p. Okay, so let's derive our first probability generating function. Okay, so the definition of probability generating functions here, you just take probabilities um, associated with um, our random variable taking uh, a value of an integer i, and you times it by z to the power of that integer. Well, clearly, in when we talk about Bernoulli distribution, we mean only two values. So our random variable can take only two values, 0 and 1. So here, in this case, um, we will sum the probability that our Bernoulli random variable can take 0 times z to the power of 0, plus probability that my random variable takes 1 times z to the power of 1. We just apply this uh, formula here. So, so what is the probability that my Bernoulli distributed random variable takes a 0? Well, all we have to do is just to apply this PMF here, substituting uh, where necessary, z 0. So i will become 0, so i is 0. So, and then times it by z to the power of 0. Well, z to the power of 0 is for sure 1, okay? Anything to 0 is 1. And uh, here, if we apply one more time the PMF uh, with replacing i with 1, you will see that this actually reduces to 1, and it will get p. I'm derived it uh, a moment earlier. So essentially we're getting from the first from the first expression here we are getting 1 times 1 minus p so it's just 1 minus p add p times z uh, to the power of 1 which is pz okay so um, one more time it's just 1 minus p um, plus pz which is the same as q plus pz. Okay, so where is this q coming from? Well, I just said let p1 minus p equal q. It just looks neater. So our moment generating function of Bernoulli distribution is just q uh, plus p times z where 1 minus p equals q. Okay, so the hardest part, the hardest bit is actually behind us because now we will just apply uh, the uh, 5 or 6 properties um, I um, enumerated before, and let's see if they actually work. So the first property says, if you want to find probability of your random variable taking a value, then all you do is just differentiate your probability generating function and evaluate it 0, divide by 1, minus I factor factorial, where I stands just the um, the integer, i.e. the value that the, the our random va variable is taking. So say here, I want to know probability that my random variable takes a value of 1, well it turns out to be p, okay? Here I say, what's the probability that my random variable is going to be 0? Well it's just 1 divided by 0 factorial times a g derivative, 0 derivative is as if you were actually taking the probability generating function and uh, not differentiating it at all, so it's just like 1 divided by 0 factorial times q, and this should be in brackets here, plus pz evaluated 0, so when I re replace 0 here for z, it's going to be 
is 0. So this is just going to drop out and I'll be left with Q. Okay, so the first property seems like it's working pretty well. Second property tells me that if I just replace Z in my moment generating function with 1, okay, here, then what I'll get is 1. Okay, so let's see. So Q plus P times Z and I just evaluated that Z equals 1. Okay, so I get Q plus P equals 1, okay, because total law of probability, if my memory serves me right, tells us that the sum of prob all probabilities must equal uh, to 1. Okay, why does it have to equal to 1? Well, because my random variable, say x, can take only two values, 1 minus 1, with, say, probability 1 half, 1 half. So um, you will see that these are the only two values that my var variable can take and therefore it has to be exhaustive so it has to equal to 1 the sum of the pro um, marginal probabilities has to be 1. A very useful property is property number 4 we can see here that if we differentiate once and evaluate at 1 uh, we will get a mean okay so let's see indeed the case so we will take the derivative of q plus bz, yeah, because this is what we derived as our probability generating function, and then we'll evaluate it at 1. Okay, so when we differentiate uh, q uh, be becomes 0 because it's just a constant, it doesn't have any z term here. So um, when we differentiate p times z, we will get p because uh, when we differentiate z, it's just going to be 1. So um, now when we try to evaluate p at z equals 1, because there is no z in this expression, it just becomes p. Therefore, conclusion from this exercise is that the mean of the Bernoulli distribution is just p. Okay, so property number 5 says that if we differentiate our moment generating function twice and evaluate it um, 1, we'll get something like this, which is the second moment minus, f minus mean. Okay, so from the previous exercise, i.e. property number 4, we found that if we differentiate our MGF once, okay, so G1 and evaluate it 1, we get P. So what's going to happen if we differentiate it second time? Uh, we'll notice that there is no Z here, so if we differentiate second time, we will just get 0, yeah? So that's what we got here. So very boring, actually. The second factorial moment of the Bernoulli distribution is just zero. Okay, so what's variance going to look like? Okay, property number seven. Well, we said to get variance, you first take the second factorial moment, then you add the first factorial moment and subtract from the whole thing first factorial moment squared. Okay, so um, our second factorial moment was zero our first factorial moment, i.e. our mean, was p. First factorial moment squared, i.e. our mean squared, is just p squared. So this is the same, so we are left with just these two uh, p's here, p minus p squared. It's the same as 1 minus p uh, times p, okay? All I've done here is just said, well, look, if I multiply p times 1, I'm going to get p. If I multiply p times minus p, I'm going to get p squared, okay? The reason why I've done it is just to, for you to notice that actually 1 minus p can be expressed as q. So I've got a nice expression here for variance, uh, which is uh, q times p. In the previous video, I said that there is actually a way of getting raw moments rather than factorial moments out of the um, probability generating function. But it's slightly more complicated. Okay, so the way you approach this problem is the following way. Um, when you try to find an nth or ith um, row moment, all you do is you apply this um, z times d over dz twice, okay, so, because we are trying to find a second row moment. Now, why are we trying to do this? Because uh, as you saw before, we are not getting raw moments when we differentiate probability generating function, uh, we are getting factorial moments and it, it's hard to work with factorial moments. 
so, for instance, here I try to find second raw moment. The way I'm going, going to do this is first write q, q plus pz, which is our um, probability generating function, and then I'm, I will apply. I'm going. I'm going left now. I will apply first uh, the differentiation. So I will first differentiate q plus pz with respect to z. Okay, and then I will multiply it by z. Okay, so we are here now. So that's what I've done because when I differentiate q plus pz, I'm gonna get p. Okay, and then what I do, I multiply it by z. Okay, so I multiply it by z. And then I'm left with just this exp um, operation here, uh, which I have to apply one more time. So what I do is I yet again differentiate this expression here, so d over dz of z times p, which is just p, okay? And then I have to multiply again by z, which I've done here. Okay, and now uh, evaluate everything at 1 and I get p. Great, P is our second uh, raw uh, moment. So now I can I can I can just simply apply uh, the definition of variance, which is second raw moment minus the first moment squared, and guess what? I'm getting the same answer uh, as um, per property number seven, where obviously it was just slightly more complicated. So all that to say that there exists a way of getting raw moments directly out of your probability generating function, but you need to ensure that you apply this formula correctly, okay? You first have to differentiate n times by z once, and then second time, okay? And you have to do it n times, depending on which moment you're trying to derive. So if I wanted a third row moment, I would do it three times. So you differentiate, multiply by z, differentiate, multiply by z, etc. And then, once you're done, you evaluate at set equals 1, and this should ensure that you get the uh, required raw 